Transport can make or break your cattle's final weight before market. But what actually happens inside that truck? I'm exposing the hidden effects of transport stress on Hereford bulls ready for slaughter and what it means for your profits. Watch closely, this might shock you. So what exactly is this transport stress we talk about? It's not just one thing. It's a powerful combination of factors that hits your cattle all at once. Imagine this for a moment. Your Hereford bull, which has spent its life in a familiar pasture with a stable herd, is suddenly separated, moved through unfamiliar chutes, and loaded onto a vibrating, noisy metal box. It's crowded, the temperature can swing wildly, and it's surrounded by other anxious animals. Have you ever noticed your cattle looking gaunt and exhausted after a trip? That's not just fatigue, my friend. That is the visible sign of a deep, physiological storm happening inside their bodies. The main culprit, the secret enemy to your bottom line, is a hormone called cortisol. You've probably heard of it as the stress hormone. When your bull is under stress, its body floods with cortisol. This hormone's job is to prepare the body for a fight or flight response. And to do that, it needs quick energy. Where does it get this energy? It starts breaking down the very things you've worked so hard to build, fat reserves, and more importantly, muscle tissue. Your bull is literally consuming its own saleable weight to cope with the journey. Every single hour on that truck is potentially turning your profits into stress hormones. But it gets worse. Let's talk about something called muscle glycogen. Think of glycogen as the fuel tank in your bull's muscles. It's a stored form of energy. During a calm life on the pasture, this tank is full. But the stress of transport, the constant jostling, the fear, it rapidly depletes this fuel. And here is the critical part that every single cattle producer needs to understand. The amount of glycogen in the muscle at the time of slaughter directly determines the final quality of the meat. When a bull with plenty of glycogen is processed, the glycogen in the muscle converts to lactic acid. This causes the pH of the meat to drop to a desirable level, somewhere between 5.4 and 5.7. This process is what gives you that bright, cherry red color, the firm texture, and the good shelf life that packers and consumers demand. But what happens to our stressed Hereford bull? He arrives at the abattoir with his glycogen tank on empty. With little to no glycogen, there's very little lactic acid produced after slaughter. The result? The muscle pH stays high, often above 6.0. And this leads to something dreaded in the meat industry, dark, firm, and dry meat, or DFD for short. This meat has a dark, purplish color that customers find unappealing. It feels tough, almost sticky to the touch, and because of its high pH, it's a perfect breeding ground for bacteria, drastically reducing its shelf life. Now, let's put this into dollars and cents, because that's where it truly hits home. The most obvious loss is shrinkage. That's the total weight an animal loses during transport. This loss can range anywhere from 3% to as high as 10% on very long, stressful journeys. Let's take a 1,400-pound market-ready Hereford bull. A conservative 4% shrink is 56 pounds. 56 pounds of weight that you paid to put on just vanished into thin air. At today's prices, that could easily be over $100 lost on a single animal. Now multiply that by a full truckload of 20 or 30 animals, the numbers become staggering. But the financial bleeding doesn't stop there. And the worst part is, many ranchers don't even realize where this next loss is coming from. If your bull's carcass grades as DFD, it will be heavily penalized. It gets downgraded. The packer will pay you a significantly lower price per pound for that meat because they know it's harder to sell. So you've lost weight on the journey and now you're getting paid less for the weight that's left. It's a devastating double whammy to your profitability and it all traces back to what happened on that truck. So, what are the common mistakes that almost guarantee these losses? The first one is poor handling during loading. Using electric prods excessively, shouting, rushing the animals, this starts the cortisol spike before the wheels even start turning. 
Another huge mistake is overcrowding the truck. You might think you're saving money by fitting one more in, but you're not. Overcrowded cattle are more likely to get bruised, injured, or go down, and the stress levels go through the roof. On the flip side, understocking is also a problem. Too much space allows them to be thrown around during transit, causing injury and stress. There's a sweet spot for stocking density, and it's crucial to get it right. Transporting during the hottest part of the day in summer or in bitter cold without proper protection is another classic error. Heat stress in particular is incredibly damaging and rapidly accelerates weight loss and glycogen depletion. Finally, a very common and costly mistake is mixing unfamiliar cattle right before shipping them. This establishes a new stressful pecking order inside a moving truck, leading to fighting, injuries, and immense stress for every animal involved. Does this sound familiar on your ranch? In a moment, I'll share the practical steps you can take to prevent almost all of this. Now for the good news. How do we fix this? How do we protect our animals and our profits? It all comes down to good stockmanship and smart management. Let's call them the golden rules of cattle transport. Rule number one, prepare the cattle properly. This starts days before transport. Ensure your animals are familiar with being handled. Low stress stockmanship isn't just a buzzword, it's a money-making strategy. Move them calmly and quietly. On the day of transport, ensure they have access to water right up until a few hours before loading. It's generally best to withhold feed for about 8 to 12 hours before a long trip. This reduces the risk of bloat and makes them more comfortable on the journey. Rule number two, master the loading and journey. Load the cattle in compatible, familiar groups whenever possible. If you must mix them, do it a few days before transport so they can settle their social order in the pasture, not on the truck. Use a well-designed ramp and chute system, and please handle them with patience. A calm animal walks on the truck, a panicked animal fights. Choose your driver wisely. A good, experienced livestock hauler who drives smoothly, avoids sudden stops, and understands animal welfare is worth their weight in gold and ensure the truck itself is well ventilated and appropriate for the weather. Rule number three, manage the arrival. This is the step that so many people forget. The journey's end isn't the finish line. After unloading at the processing plant, the cattle need a rest period. This is called lairage. Allowing your bulls 12 to 24 hours in a quiet pen with access to fresh, clean water is one of the most powerful things you can do. This rest period allows their bodies to calm down, the cortisol levels to drop, and most importantly, it gives their muscles a chance to partially replenish some of that lost glycogen. This single step can be the difference between a high grading carcass and a discounted DFD carcass. It can literally save you from those devastating price cuts. These practices aren't just for the big corporate operations, whether you are shipping five head or 500, these principles apply. It's about understanding the biology of the animal you've raised. It's about shifting your mindset from simply moving a product to carefully managing a valuable living asset right up to the final moment. The care you take in those final 24 hours can protect the investment you've made over the last two years. Before we wrap up, I want to say something important. This channel, Biggest Bulls and Cow, is more than just videos. It's a community for ranchers and cattle enthusiasts who are dedicated to raising better, healthier, and more profitable animals. We are all here to learn from science, from experience, and from each other. If you found this information valuable, please help our community grow. First hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video that could help your operation. Second, leave a comment below. Share your own experience with transporting cattle or ask any question you might have. I read every single one. And finally, if you know another rancher, a student, or anyone who could benefit from this, please share this video with them. Here, we're all about growing together as responsible, knowledgeable producers. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep farming smart and stay profitable.